surgeon's table Take my fingerprints if you are able Pick my brains, come on and pick my pockets Steal my eyeballs and come back for the sockets Run every kind of a test from A to Z But you still know nothing about me Run my name Check my record, let's check out my facts Well, I check if I pay my income tax Pour over everything in my CV But you still know nothing about me Well, you still know Touch my house with a fine tooth coat. We'll turn over everything, cause I won't be home. Turn your microscope and tell me what you see, cause you still Jazz bass players and my dear friend Peter Walters. So you're young, you're a passionate musician, and you've been working really hard at your craft for many years. You've just finished high school, university, college, but what now? The statistics are really challenging. Only 12 and a 12,500 Australians out of a population of nearly, nearly 22 million Australian musicians are able to work as full-time musicians. That's less than 0.05% of the population or nearly 1 in 1,800 people. Australian musicians earn less than half of what other, others earn in similarly qualified professions. And about 53% of a musician's time is spent on other work in order to make a living. So what we know is that as professional artists in Australia endure considerable economic hardship to produce the art that so enriches our society. Now these statistics are challenging and life as a musician is definitely tough. And for some young graduates, 
Well, they give up before they even try. About 20 years ago, when I first finished my uh, first degree in music, I was a skilled and knowledgeable musician thanks to some really wonderful mentors and teachers. However, at the time, I really had no idea what I was going to do. I mean, how was I going to sustain a career as a teacher and a, and a working musician? Well, I quickly worked out that I just have to make that happen myself because sitting around waiting for the phone to ring was not an option. I realized that there may be no jobs in the arts, but there are opportunities. And how was I going to convey this message to my students? So I realized that what my students needed were the skills that I had to learn for myself all those years. What my students needed, what I needed to do, was fast track them to become entrepreneurs. Now, the term entrepreneur is a fuzzy one. The Oxford Dictionary uh, traces the word back to French origin, meaning to undertake. And they provide us with three definitions. Uh, the, a director of a musical institution, a person who undertakes or controls a business or enterprise, and a contractor who acts as an intermediary. Now, I really like all these definitions, and I, I think probably the one we're most familiar with is the second one, the risk taker that starts a new innovative business venture. But the first one's important because of its cultural association. And the third one, I think, is really important. That person who has that ability to bring interested parties together. So I was really lucky. I was, I, I was working in an innovative school. So I was able to apply this definition to Queensland music students. But a lot of schools aren't equipped to, to deal with, with developing young entrepreneurs. We needed to rethink music education. We need to broaden its application. Because young entrepreneurs are people who take risks, who network, who work with autonomy and independence. Entrepreneurs are collaborative and set objectives. They're creative and innovative. They have good industry know-how, and they know how to turn what could be into a reality and they have the self-confidence and the self-belief to make that happen. So <laughs> the next challenge was, well, as a teacher, how am I going to teach this? How do you teach entrepreneurs? Well, what I knew is that I needed an approach that would be student-centered, student-driven, with the teacher as a co-participant in the learning process. It would be based on student interests. It would be student-owned to enable them kickstart into the music industry with the opportunities to expand their networks to become useful and resourceful, that is, to build their social capital. One day I said to my students, uh, what are you going to do about this young girl who, in a newspaper article, uh, was explaining that there were few opportunities for young musicians to perform in professional settings and a lack of venues for people under 18 to go out and enjoy and hear and support live music? Well, the answer was that we would start our own music industry organization. And we launched YMI, Youth Music Industries. So these young, new entrepreneurs set up a mission statement that they would build a youth music scene in Queensland. They were going to use YMI as a platform for young musicians to perform, to network, to record, and, uh, and to learn about the music industry. And I was going to use YMI as a platform to launch my students directly into the music industry, to develop their entrepreneurial attributes and help them build their social capital. So the first entrepreneurial initiative was called Emerge. Now this is the school theatre turned into an underage venue. They use their social networks to find local bands. They use their social media prowess to, uh, to get an audience. And after the success of the first Emerge, they'd made enough money to hold the nights regularly, to pay their own sound, pay their own sound technicians and uh, security, which started to free them from having to rely on the school infrastructure, the principal and the teachers. And eventually they started to hold these Emerge nights in venues around Queensland. 
They worked with young up-and-coming artists and eventually paid them as well to come up with a set of really quirky poster designs which are now a major trademark of the YMI brand. Now Emerge was great. It was successful because it was run solely by 16 and 17 year olds who just had to learn on the job. You know, sometimes they made some really big mistakes, but when they did, they just got better. These young entrepreneurs were coordinating artists, liaising with band managers and the media. They were managing their finances. They were acting as stage managers, packing up, setting up gear at all hours of the night, coming up with creative marketing strategies. They were becoming highly effective project managers. They were able to turn this vision of building a youth music scene into a reality. And so this entrepreneurial vision, this confidence and this self-belief just kept edging them on further. This entrepreneurial approach, this new learning environment, gave the students permission to think bigger. So one day in passing, I said to my students, what if we turned the school into a giant music festival like the Big Day Out? And it happened, of course. <laughs> We're now in our fifth year of the annual Four Walls Music Festival. So imagine Emerge, but this time on a much bigger scale. Four stages running simultaneously for 11 hours. The whole school redesigned, and barely recognisable, all equipped with food court and uh, merchandise sales. These students had a vision to give emerging artists festival experience by giving them the opportunity to play on the same lineup as some of Australia's top music acts. Again, these students were responsible for every aspect of the coordination and the creation of the festival. Imagine coordinating over 150 artists on one day, navigating a capacity audience of around 500 people throughout the four floors of a school building liaising with some of the biggest names in band management, working with the media, photographers, filmmakers, of course, managing the finances, and it was a big financial risk every year. And some of these uh, young entrepreneurs actually played in their own bands on the festival lineup. One uh, industry professional commented uh, in, a, in, an in an interview that it was equally, the organisation of this festival was equally on par with any $200,000 budget event. So what we know is that entrepreneurs require strong, diverse networks and they require good industry know-how. So the next part of my learning environment design was how was I going to connect these young people with the high end of industry professionals? So why am I partnered with Australia's largest music industry body, Q Music, and together collaborated on a new original concept called Little Big Sound, which is a youth music industry conference, where each year approximately 300 youth delegates come together to hear young, successful music industry professionals talking about a wide range of careers in the music industry and the skills and the qualities that one needs in order to get into those careers. But from a learning perspective, connecting these young people with the industry opened up so many opportunities and resources, the world really was their oyster. These young people have made such a significant contribution to the local creative economy. They've had over 4,000 young people in attendance at their events. They've given over 500 musicians gigs and paid over $80,000 in fees to aspiring, young aspiring creative professionals and of course musicians. So one of the last initiatives of YMI was to take these young entrepreneurs to regional towns such as Cairns where they could share the lessons that they'd learned on the journey and show these young people that they too can have or can create the same opportunities that they had made possible here in Brisbane. And in fact, they asked the same question to their regional peers that I 
asked you at the beginning of my presentation. You're a young, passionate musician. You've worked hard for many years, but what now? And in the very wise words of these 16, 17-year-old students, they said, from simply starting something, more opportunities will arise. Find people that can help you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And if you're doing something that you're passionate about and push it, then people will notice. I had a dream for music education, that we could get beyond the four walls of the school building and that students themselves could respond to the challenges that they're facing. They say that entrepreneurship can't be taught, that you're born with it. But I have witnessed firsthand the birth of a very successful group of young entrepreneurs. <coughs> And all we have to do is create the space to enable these young human beings to come into an awareness of their own as confident, capable, young people with a strong sense of self-belief. Thank you very much.